Mark Golden, the Speaker of the House, Juliet Holness, Mrs. Juliet Holness, Angela Brown Burke, Peter Mercat Bunting, Dayton Campbell, whose middle name is not worth mentioning, it's too ordinary and unimpressive. Hello everyone, Karen Cecilia here. I don't want to talk to you about a few things. I am still laughing from the Mark Golden um, Parliament looking team. And um, it really give, gave me a giggle today. Really, really had me laughing the whole day. But I want to start off by going back to the, the Parliament briefly before I, de I delve into a few things with, with Mark Golden's um, What's It Not Cabinet. Um, look like a, a closet. More look like a, a big room or something, but whatever it is. I have been thinking about this whole thing about Mrs. Oldest being Speaker of the House and how Mark Golden got up in his budget presentation in King Charles's the third parliament and how he behaved like a dirty corner boy and how he behaved like a hooligan. And I am looking at it and I am I am not wondering to myself about Anything regarding Mark Golden, I've been telling the world for the last three years who he is, and he will always remain who he is. I must say that I'm disappointed about Julian Robinson. I know he was sitting in the parli parliament telling Mr. Warmington, go on outside, go on outside. The amount of calls that I have received from people in the private sector who talk to me from time to time, because they have a vested interest in, 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 in this country. And of course, the world of a capitalist. And uh, them just talk to me because I, mean, I beg them nothing. And them just like talk to me. I was talking to a couple of them who said that they, they supported Julian Robinson. They like him. And um, they think that he would have been a good prime minister. They never knew that this, was, this could be him. Sitting in the parliament. A parliament which he has sat in longer than Mark Golden. And he himself must know the procedures and how it works in the parliament that you don't tell a member to leave, to go on outside when you need a quorum to finish your speech. So it, it, let's assume that Mark didn't know that. But I would imagine all the other people, them, including Julian Robinson, who was the loudest voice, telling people to go on outside instead of calming down people and say, let us finish this thing, this is the parliament. The people looking at us, they have a country to run, we have a country to run, we have a country to run. The tour we are around the country, we have, we have vital position. But let us let us finish this and then we can take, take whatever argument outside. The Prime Minister got up and he walked out. He walked out because he was angry. Maybe he should not have. But I can understand why he wants to walk out when his wife has been so viciously attacked. And attacked in a way that was uncalled for. An attack that was meted out by the leader of the opposition party. And that must have been very hard for him to take. And, I, and, and the reason why I'm going back is this. Everybody have seen the videos when Mrs. Olness was um, nominated to be Speaker of the House after having been Deputy Speaker for a period of time. And nobody seemed to have had a problem with her being deputy speaker and that must have been on the assumption that she will sit in every now and then when the when the speaker is ill or when the speaker is away or the speaker want to give her the experience and so she will sit in and so nobody never consider it a big deal it could have been that that but from the moment she became deputy speaker everybody should have wrapped them wrapped them head around the possibility that she could become speaker in this in this in, in this in this um um in this term in this political term and um um, every, because anything is, is, is possible in the, in the politics so it appears to me that they never thought about that when she became the deputy speaker of the house was an opportunity for the opposition leader to voice his concerns about her assuming that position he had that opportunity and he should have taken that opportunity in a respectful way whether in writing or to stand up in a full sitting of the parliament and make his concerns be known as the opposition leader. He did no such thing. On the day that she was being selected as speaker, 
Comrade Paul Well, Mr. Paul, um, uh, Member of Parliament, Paul Well got up and I think he seconded the motion. Everybody has followed on the opposition benches. Not everybody, but quite a few people followed on the opposition benches. While they were giving their two cents worth to, you know, give Mrs. Wallace a whole props and yeah, and, you know, we, we're with you and congratulations and stuff like that. The opposition leader was sitting there fuming, fuming like a petulant child who didn't get what he wanted and him a fuss and a, with himself because, you know, blackmailing him parents, you know, children blackmail appearance all the time with them fuming and them fussing. That's how we looked on the video. Because even within that moment, with all of his members, or a good amount of his members, sanctioning the, 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 um, this, the new speaker, healing the move, giving her support, even in that moment when all of that died down, he could have, as a gentleman should, get up when everything died down and say that I want to, you know, say something, um, um, congratulations to the speaker, but I want to register some reservations I have or some concerns I have and hope that these concerns and reservations will be met with um, the highest standard there of something to that effect. He could have said it then. He did not do that either. Let's go back then and let's say that because he threw, he threw Paul Well under the bus after Paul Well second the motion for Mrs. Holness speakership. He said, I, um, I was sent a clip where he said that um, there was no discussion about it. Something that effect, I don't want to tell a lie on him. Something like he, um, there was no discussions or there was no dialogue about it. So I don't, I don't understand how Paul Well just get up and, um, and second the motion. Once again, I go back and I said, the leader of the opposition, having known before the parliament that Mrs. Wallace will be nominated as the deputy speaker, she will be the first nominee for the uh, in line. She said she wanted and, you know, she'd be the person who's going to be nominated and people are going to support her. And he could have taken that opportunity and say to his caucus, have a caucus meeting, and get a, a feel from the entire caucus, the entire PMP caucus in the parliament, and said, where, where, uh, where we stand on this. He could have used that opportunity of that caucus meeting to say to his members, listen, I have a problem with it. And he could have stated what his problems are for his people, and they could have worked it out and decide how they're going to approach it and save the country, this big, excited embarrassment from the opposition party embarrassment and this this degrading uh, 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 of not only the speaker of the house but the wife of the prime minister and the only person in this country that have spoken about his wife is me we over here the, in the resistance proper well and let me just say me a couple other people mentioned some things but me but even speaking about his wife i don't speak to his wife in a derogatory way I speak about his wife, the way he has treated his wife, Mark Golden, the way that he married her, the way that he got her pregnant um, when she was young, and the age, the way that he sneaked away, his father bought the tickets and sneaked him away, him and the wife, him and the girl, to, to Florida to get married, and she gave birth five days after the, the, the wedding, so she was heavily pregnant. We talk about those things. I think the country has a right to know those things. But we don't talk about it in a derogatory way towards Mrs. Mrs. Golden. Because Mrs. Golden don't do nobody nothing. We're glad to see her out and about. Because from him married the woman, him have her hide up up at the house like a slave. It's just since him get involved in the politics and him start to get an high profile in the politics, him start to walk up and down for sure everybody say have a black wife. And then it turn out that the black wife that him have... Um, is an undereducated woman, and this is not a, 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 um, a, a, an attack against Mrs. Golden. It's not. But him, the big white master slave owner's son, married to this young black girl because him got her pregnant and never saw fit to help her, to elevate herself. Keep, kept her away from her family. Because the family them tell we. 
kept her away from her family. Them tell we, Mark, kept her away from her family. When she go to school with the children, them, 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 they, they laugh and I giggle and tell them friends that she's the nanny or the maid, whatever. And then we know her. And we know the story now. And we know everything. But we still have not attacked your wife in the way that you went after Mrs. Oldness. And it is unacceptable. But it is everything that Mark Golding is that we have been telling the country that he is. Did he talk about it with his caucus? Did they think through a good strategy on how to handle that? Did they say to themselves, make a the comparison and say, when she was deputy speaker, she acted like this. So how would she be like speaker? Did they do anything like that? So let's assume that the caucus did not discuss it then. Because it don't appear that they had a, a discussion about it. The opposition leaders' behavior. In talking about the Prime Minister's wife, the way he did, the Speaker of the House, a woman, an independent woman, is everything that he, he is and everything that he grew up in. Is everything, is every bloodline of his, his ancestors came out on that day. And it was disgusting. It was very, very disgusting. And it was disturbing because this man wants to lead this country. And people are telling him to lead this country. And the Jamaican people might very well elect him because the Jamaican people are not very, very, the Jamaican voters are not very, very, um, very astute when it comes to electing good leaders. And, and this, I'm not disrespecting the Jamaican voters, but them know. That they have made mistakes time and time again. And we'll talk about that another time. But this is the man that was behaving that way. And that's where, that's where I want to start from um, with, with, with this. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about the fact that he campaigned on a general election platform. Mark Golden's message was to the electorate telling them to vote out this wicked government. I we to talk about that. I already told you in that previous voice. I will to talk about that in our, in our live. That needs to be talk, spoken about in our, in our live. But he campaigned on a general election platform. And this is what he brought out in a general election platform. So we're assuming that the 8% that didn't show up for the local government elections that showed up in 2016 knew that it was a local government election and them then no no worries with it. Them then no no hurry if get rid of Brogard and them then no no hurry if elect Mark Golden. So let's, let's, let's say that. Since the local government election where Cliff Hughes them told him that he won and then when all the votes were counted, they told him that he won when about 37% of the votes were counted. The electoral office system was a little bit down that day. And I'm blaming the, the electoral office because the electoral office had been 100% splendid, marvelous, wonderful electoral system that we have. Wonderful electoral system. And I want to big up the, the electoral office staff. I want to big up Mr. Brown. Hmm? I want to big them up how they stood up and took all of this beating from a pedophile like Dayton Campbell and a slave owner's son like Mark Golden. And I want to really pay some respect to the electoral office. But since, since the end of the elections and the electoral office produced their results, that the JLP won seven municipalities. The PMP won five municipalities. The mayor of Portmore, who is elect, directly elected by the Portmore people, um, ran on the PMP ticket and is elected as a PMP mayor. The Kingston and St. Andrew municipality came in tied. 20 seats for the JLP, 20 seats for the PMP. PMP has the mayor, the JLP has the deputy mayor. But ever since that result have been out there and accepted by 
a majority of the Jamaican people. Mark Golding seemed to be sliding down some kind of slippery slope of mental decline. Him just going on, on and on and on about things that nobody seems to know what him doing. Him as a owner, he must look like a madman all day long. But, given their predilection to drama and lies, I don't know if all of this is planned too. But I ask myself, why the anxiety? And why some and sometimes is outright mental decline moments just come home stalkingly. And it makes you want to take stock. What is happening with Mark Jefferson Golden? And my own little crash course in psychology tells me a couple of things. And that is one, he lost. He was embarrassed because he thought he won. And then he lost. And he's embarrassed by it. And he can't seem to handle it. So he upped his game and I don't know if I sniff more coke or if I mix up the coke with something else now. I don't know. But he's on the edge. Mark Golden is on edge. And I have to ask, is he all right? Angela Brownberg is in charge of Mark Golden. She is in charge of him. She's in charge of everything. Because she's bunt in proxy. And I have to ask, is he all right? I don't hear Mark Golden. Is he all right? Are you guys taking care of a leader? Remember, you know, we have a two-party democratic system, you know. We have a system where the king of England Charles the third is our ceremonial head of state. We have a parliament with a prime minister and a leader of the opposition, which Mark Golden is. So his mental state and his, his ability to perform his duties in parliament is important. So we want to know, is he all right? Is he okay? We got the answer to that question half-heartedly or somewhat when Mr. Golden released the list of his, um, and, and, I promise you I'm not going to laugh. It is no serious matter. I laugh already. The, the list of his potential ministers of government and their junior ministers should he, the people of this country take up themselves and go into a polling station and go elect him. These are the people he's presenting to the country that will be ruling over the masses. Pedophiles. Pedophiles. Outright child molesters. Criminals. Future international scammers. Drug dealers, ex drug dealers, no matter whether you do it now or whether you're not doing it. Look at the list of people that Mr. Golden presented to the country. And I know I'm not a, an idiot. I know that he wants to big up all of them because it's part of him, 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 him demonstration to show that him, um, what, him is a unifying leader. You are not a unifying leader, Mark. And just, a, just that whole foolishness of people that you put together and call a, a shadow is an indication that you're not a unifier. But I'm not going to point that out on this voice note. I'm going to wait. I'm not going to point out. I'm not in that mood. I'm not in that mood. Not today. I'm not going to point that out yet. Because you're not a unifier. Which is why Angela have to control you. Because even if, even if Mark Golden himself want to take a chance and step on the brighter side, step over to the brighter side of things, where he actually is a unifier. And do have people like Joan Gordon Webley, who works for Angela Bromberg, who works for Peter Bunting. And Dayton Campbell in a theme corner do a, so, a try to do something and trying to see if him can get loot a seat. And the future international scammer who is now in the cabinet, what's it, not break front, whatever it is. While Paul Burke are run the secretariat. So there you have it. That's it's them. That, that, that's that's a circle. And this is what 
they present to the country. And I'm going to start with my favorite guy when it comes to lick down somebody verbally. And that is Hubert Williams, Willie Ryan, former mayor of Morant Bay. Junior spokesperson for agriculture. <laughs> now, on a, on a year the voice note I, I did on this man. When he was mayor. Right? And I'm going to replay. I'm going to reissue that voice note. For people to hear. That this is the person that Mark Golden just said. Are you are my deputy. Are you are dating. My shadow dating. What a box said for the land of Jamaica. What a thing for poor Jamaica. The thief has shadow the, the pedophile. And this is what Jamaica is left with. Huh? Then you have. One person shadowing two places. In the case of the nice young lady, Wayne it, Wayne it strong, Wayne it strong, love Wayne it. She's in two different places. One next fellow named Oshie and something like that. He also in two different places. Then you have the one in the Byfield, down in Saint Mary, the one who actively, outrightly, plainly sabotage the PMP seat. In the 2020 elections. He was hiding it. He was out there doing it. Spending money doing it. In his case. He wasn't really a part of. The. The Dayton camp. Peter Bunting operation. To sabotage candidates. He was just sabotaging. Jason Stanford for his own gain. And look what happened now. The people of Gale elected him. Councillor. But I'm sure them, them never really mean to. They may like a lot of people where them never mean to really elect them. Them just go vote because them think them have voted bro God. And when them wake up, so a new man are going to be in charge. So in them vote for a lot of people where them never mean to vote for. So them never really mean for vote to, for, for, by, for by feel. <laughs> Him just happen to be the one who get it. But them never mean it. But never came out with enthusiasm. We're going to elect Mr. Byfield. No, 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 not like that. And the same guy who undermined and sabotaged a PMP, a selected, duly selected PMP candidate, Mark Golden rewarded him with a council seat. And now him is candidate. And him now him that what's it, that break from the parliament building, whatever it is. A minute. And just the other day, he played a pivotal role. Pivotal role in what? Has befallen Principal Basco down in St. Mary. And he mean that he, what's it not? Now, Hubert Williams Ryan, not only of how he, he managed the resources of the St. Thomas Parish Council, not only that, but under his watch. We lost a seat that we had in the parish council under his watch. Don't care who the candidate is. Under his watch, we lost a seat. Under his watch, we also lost the land you will see, which I'm glad we lost. But here's a role that he played in my losing the seat. They elevated Mar to regional chairman last August against all conventional wisdom, against good advice. The man won the seat the last time by one vote. One. Nyamaf and teeth up the whole of the Christmas money. Never give the people them nothing. I want to elevate him to regional chairman. Uno elevate him to reach that chairman and then he gonna lose the seat by a handful of votes. And I know said Jesus rose from the dead Sunday, right? Ryan and all on Mark, Dayton Campbell, Angela. Say I'll want dirty labor right, Joan Garden Webb. She's gonna get what's coming to her, and I don't mean that in any 
physical way. Don't mean that. Not that way harm her, but she will get what's coming to her. Them deem the regional chairmanship because him is bunting boy. And Uno tell people, say, Uno put out something to make people feel like Uno unite and Uno bring together. Uno can fool Uno want to fool, you know. Uno can blind Uno want blind with the various arguments and everybody can buy into what Uno is saying. So everybody can always roll in and, and find them look a spot in the room or the table there. Because the table full you now. People still they do away with them bench and them and I try pushing for it a little catch. Because everybody think that we're not going to be winning. So we not look a seat. And they can pull wool over full eyes. Because why it's easy to pull wool over all of you eyes who jostling and hellboying for a seat. Is because on loyalty is to party and power, not on a country, not on a family, not on a community. On a loyalty is to a party and to a power. It's more to a power actually, not so much to a party. I don't think anyone really have any loyalty to the People's National Party. When the comedy argument, but boy, I carry the food, just put aside. My goodness, go and go win the election and come. I don't know which party on a join, but me know which party I was a member of. That party don't exist anymore. And me no want be in it at all. No near it. The two candidates in Portland, between the two of them, could only give us back. The two seats that we had. <laughs> you name two candidates for each seat in Portland. And the only thing that they could have contributed to that is the two seats that we had first. They made no dent. And they remain candidates and you elevate them. I don't want to tell all of them to fool me. I fool them up, you know. What is fool marker? Is fool marker fooling up? The whole owner get fooled. The whole owner, every stinking one owner, getting fooled. Because this, this chessboard here, is bunting chessboard. And while he has taken a step back, and I'm going to talk about that one in detail, but not today, not on this vice note. Angela is his proxy. And she have her various other proxies, John Gordon, Webley, and whoever else. And Mark Golden, him is in the middle, and everybody, Angela and Paul, and them in charge of him. The whole owner is going to learn who this man is in very short order. So enjoy on the time in the sunlight. Because him putting on a name and picture and poster and putting out in bloggers fair is the most important thing that ever happened to some owner and it will remain the most important thing that will ever happen to some owner because uno no measure up to mark golden tapanaris for him uno not going to be it uno just it for now to help him get elected mark golden have no loyalty to none of uno Mark Golden's loyalty is to him businesses and him money and him partner Peter Bunting and them businesses where them are run and them businesses where them are bill and the more money where them are make because them are opposition leader the two of them are opposition leader uno unessential and unimportant in the scheme of things but uno seeking power so him elevate them I have been old enough for a while, you know. But I see my so elevate Ryan Simpson. And I want somebody to send a voice note to Ryan Simpson. And tell him, and him is one of about four of them that they have given seats to. Who will not be able to run. I promise you know. Him, Ryan Simpson. And about four others who I will mention as I go along. 
they will not be able to run by the time the GLP you let go for them file upon them. And it's not only the GLP you have the files on them, we have the file on them. So maybe them, all of them, maybe them can, maybe can start text talking themselves and us take themselves from now before push come to shove. Because we have the files, I don't know. We don't know we get past this. No? Yeah? We don't believe that the proximity to power mean that we don't have power. Well, proximity to the power deludes all of you to think that we don't actually wield power. We don't wield no power. Una, una, una patsy in Mark Golding and Peter Bunting's game. Only just patsy. All of you. Every single one of you. And my next voice note or my next live is going to delve into some details about some of that. So Mark Golden and him little, in big hell of a, he need a new parliament for that group. Need a, a brand new parliament for that group. I have no compunction about calling out all of you. For who you are and what you are. And Mark Golden is the head of this cult. And all of you, many of you, some of you who have called me and texted me and have conversation with me. I don't like him and doing nothing with him, but I don't want to party for win. And I told him to turn a face without any water in my mouth that are traitors to the country. And in another time, in another place, nobody will be seen when I speak to you. But oh, go and do another. Not busy with you know. But know this: any attempt by John Gordon Webley and Dayton Campbell and the international scammer Dexter Martin and Angela Brownberg to distract us from what we are doing, any and all attempt will fail. And you should know by now. That I'm not easily detracted, um, um, distracted. And you should know by now that I'm not easily distracted. Many people within the resistance have been distracted from time to time and going off, talking about other things and doing other things. Not Karen Cecilia. Mm -mm. Not Karen Cecilia. And if you know, send people after me, me coming after Unu. So if you know, send people after me, me going after Mark, me going after Bunting, me going after Angela. And every now and then, we just knock over John Gordon Webley and send Sheen hiding for a little bit. And Dayton Campbell, of course, because we, we have him in our line of sight because we're not going to allow him to get Luther's seat. As long as Luther wants him seat, we're not going to allow Dayton Campbell to get it. So, you can't distract me with no shenanigans. I know about Tom Foolery. Doesn't work with me. And one more thing. Lisa Anna says she's leaving and she's doing what she can for her constituency, building back her constituency. And if she wants to stay, she can't stay. No, 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 can't stop her from staying. Can't tell her that. The people of Southeast Cent and ready for rile up against her. If she wants to stay, she can't just stay. I don't can't chat to her about it. Not one of them can chat to her about it. And Lisa Anna is a public figure. Everybody can call up the public figures, them name. But anyone on cross the line. I go cross 10 and 20 lines. Anyone across the line, where Lisa is concerned, I go cross 20 lines. For sure, now this is done. Because I don't understand what we do all now. All now, we don't understand it. And it's because we don't understand it, why we're so up against us, because we don't understand what we're doing. I don't understand why we do it. It we above, we don't, air, we don't know why, because we don't have no sense of duty. And responsibility and have no honor. Huh? Everybody have watched the movie A Few Good Men. Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise. Demi Moore was in it too. And um, other people I can't remember. But everybody remember that scene in the courtroom. But Tom Cruise said, I want the truth. And Jack Nicholson said, you can't handle the truth. That is not my favorite part. 
Because behind all of that, what Nicholson was talking about when Nicholson said to Cruz, Son, I live in a world where I am guarding a wall that are guarded on the other side by men with guns who want to shoot me. I provide the freedom that you enjoy. You don't understand the word like code and honor. Those are the words that Nicholas was using to cruise. You don't understand the words like code and honor. Those are punchline words for you at your parties. And him say, him said to Tom Cruise, if you don't like the way I do things, then pick up a gun and go up on the wall. Don't question me, he was saying to Tom, Tom Cruise. You live and breathe under the blanket of freedom that I provide. And then you come into this courtroom and come question the way I provide it. I would rather you just say thank you and be on your way. That's what Nicholas was saying to him. So when you can't get about, you can't handle the truth. Think about what Nicholas said to him. I live in a world where I take up a gun and stand guard to protect my country. That is what he's saying. Don't come down here, come tell me how I should do it. Yeah, Santiago, dead. Yes, we could read him. He was a substandard soldier. And his death, Though tragic, save lives. Because he was a substandard soldier. He be the led on the team. So them cold ready mass. But in Nick Jack Nicholson's world, he is one man, one little young fella, to sacrifice for the freedom of a nation. And so throughout the whole show, me the pan Jack Nicholson side. Love Tom Cruise, but me the Jack Nicholson woman. There's nothing that Jack, Jack Nicholson watch, um, stars in or participates in, in any movie that he has been in. Uh, he's my hero because of that one show, that one movie, A Few Good Men. Because it's a, it's commitment, it's honor, it's integrity. And none of them have it over there. Mark Golden don't have it. And those who follow in him, some of whom I thought had it, don't have it. Look for Julian Robinson. I've turned himself in a little mini, mini mark. Go outside. Go outside. If somebody had told me that five, six years ago that Julian Robinson would be in, in, the, in King Charles' parliament telling a member to go outside, not knowing that when them go outside, the speech can't done. The speech will not be recorded in the, in, 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 in the parliament. And you will not get an opportunity to say to, to give the speech again. And maybe some so if some if some thing had happened and he was kinder to the speaker, she probably could have found a way. But the rules are there and the laws are there. You could make it again. I mean I know what stupidity overtook on. That's gonna feel like you could have just do all of that and then come outside and try to pull a Michael Manley I, 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 with a nervous speech looking like him going to I don't know, Matt just looked like he was going to have a nervous breakdown that day outside the parliament. He never knew when he go out with all him antics as the leader, he never knew for telling members, no, sit down, everybody, please, please, calm down. No. I'm happy if you have Julian Robinson and Angela Brombrook and the world, I tell people that must go outside. Not knowing, of course, that him can't finish him, him speech, but for go to do it. And it is a 24 hours wonder. Nobody going to follow him up past 24 hours about him walking out. I see him listen to Paul Ashley advice. I don't want to lead this country. We will have more about this what's it not cabinet, whatever it is. Mark, I forgot to build a new parliament to accommodate all of this. But we'll have more on it. So for now, that is the serious nature of it that I want to bring to you because I've had my laugh and I am still having my laugh, but I wanted to point this out to you that the Jamaican people need to pay attention to that group of people that Mark Golding's proposing. You know, a little before I start making this voice note, I was having a discussion and somebody said, and the person said to me, say, 
if Mark ever get elected prime minister, as he names the cabinet, the Jamaican people can start calling for election. <laughs> it's not impossible. It's politics. Mark Golden, who was the speaker of the house, an apology. And he should do it privately. You don't have to tell me. We don't want to know. You just need to apologize to the speaker of the house for your bad behavior. You, you grew up rich and white and slaves and, and, and helpers and everybody. I wash your socks, them, and your frows, your drawers, them, and um, teach you for COVID a year because he's an handicap. I'm sure them that at some point you must have learned a little bit of manners. Go apologize to the speaker of the house. And all I know, we are shadow things. Shadows are never normally good. Shadows always end up badly. I don't know watch TV. Anything that comes from the shadows is always bad. <laughs> Thank you all for listening to me. Rant again. All right. God bless you all. Stay safe, everybody, and keep the children safe. Good night.